All right, let's look at Acts chapter 18. Now, there's a concern that's going around. Uh, I've seen this happen with people in my church, and I'm seeing it with onliners now. A lot of them are very concerned that during their soul winning, that they've been convicted by the preaching, and when they started attending a Bible-believing church or when they got saved, they started to try to win souls to salvation, right? But let's be honest, beginners... They don't know the gospel as, uh, as much to give to other people and do it in a correct manner, right? So we got to understand that fact, correctly giving the gospel. So then when they learn about soul winning, all of a sudden they're wondering, wait a minute, I didn't uh, emphasize this part in the gospel as much, so I may have led them to hell. They might have not gotten saved. So I had a few people get into that. Not only that, there are people who uh, hear the correct gospel given, and then because they heard the correct gospel, they're wondering, if, I wonder if I got really saved. So then I noticed this. People get very emotional when it comes to the correct gospel. Now, first thing is important. The first thing is, is that you want to go by the correct gospel, and you want to go by what the Bible says. Emotions cannot be involved. So people, do not use your emotions to belittle the, the biblical correct way that God wants you to do. All right? That is very important. Don't be afraid to receive correction about making sure that you're saved and making sure that you give other people the salvation correctly. Okay? So then there are people like, well, then you're saying that I sent them all to hell. You know what my answer is? I don't know. I'm not God. I am not you, I don't read your thoughts in mine, and I wasn't there when it happened, and God knows what the, person, the lost sinner was thinking in his heart when he heard the gospel from you. So I don't know, okay? So, but my job is to make sure that I give the gospel correctly. That's my job, because there's too many heresies out there that are watering down the gospel, and then billions can go into hell if the correct gospel is not given. So that's important. So let me give a few verses about this, okay? Let's look at Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, look at this, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, all right? So this man knows his Bible so well, and he was preaching the gospel to other people. But look at his limited knowledge, Verse 25, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. See that? He did it very well. He's passionate like a lot of you who are trying to win souls or passionate about salvation. But look at this, knowing only the baptism of John. Yeah. See that? It's limited. So what did, what did he do? Look at verse 26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. See? bold about the gospel great job but does he need to receive correction yes or no yes he does but I'm a genius I'm an eloquent speaker doesn't matter you gotta do what's biblical and correct emotions cannot be involved here keep reading when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God what more perfectly notice over here that uh, he received correction. So beginners who correctly uh, give the gospel is very important. And the first thing you want to understand is that receiving correction is good. Yeah. If you're a person that cannot receive correction, then it's not just the salvation gospel you're going to get emotional about. It's going to be other preachings in the future. If you're humble to receive the correction, some of you might go, then all of my soul winning was in vain. It was for nothing. No. Apollos, it wasn't for nothing. His eloquent skills beforehand may have been perfect, but once he received correction, that experience and the soul winning he did before came in handy to become even more mighty for the Lord. Look at the next part. Verse 27, And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them, through mu uh, helped them much which had believed through, gra through grace. Yeah. For he mightily convinced the Jews yeah. that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Amen. Look, it was not for nothing. Mm -hmm. 
but people get emotionally sad and heavy hearted. And you know what? I'm going to say that some people feel very bad about it and I feel sorry for those people and I want to encourage them. Amen. All right. So those people I want to encourage not beat you down. But the people that I'm beating down are people who use this charismatic emotionalism and over, overt sensitivity to get angry at the preacher trying to help them out, like Aquila Priscilla trying to help them out, getting them correction on how to give the gospel more perfectly. Well, you're saying all oh, my soul winning was for nothing. No, God didn't say that about Apollos. What God said was once he received the correction, the previous soul winning he did, it became used for the glory of God. So you need to do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Receiving correction is good. It becomes better used for the glory of God. The second thing that you want to understand is that it's not in vain. It's a seed planting. Seed planting is not in vain. Look, I don't care how bad your soul winning is. If you give some form of the gospel, whether the person got genuinely saved or not, it's not in vain when you give that gospel. Why? Because it's a seed planting. Sometimes people who plant seeds, like giving a tract, don't have a chance to go through the entire gospel with them and get them saved. But are you saying the tract passing was in vain? Or you're saying it's, oh, pastor, it was a waste of time. No, because it planted a seed. Amen. So all the soul winning you did before, let's even say that you didn't do it correctly and the person didn't get genuinely saved. That's the same thing like tract passing. Tract passing, you didn't get the person all the way to genuine salvation, but are you saying it's all for nothing? No, it's not in vain. It's, it's used for the glory of God in the future. Amen. Amen. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Remember, Apollos was the one who received correction? But Paul said, Apollos is not the one that gets people saved, nor him. It's God who does the totality at Amen. the end. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse uh, 6. I have, a plant, I have planted... Apollos watered, but what? God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Verse 9, for we are laborers, what? Together with God. That's the idea. Verse 8, you receive your own reward for doing that. Look, all the soul winning you did was not for nothing. It was used for the glory of God to plant seeds so that why? So he can eventually use it for his glory. Amen. He's the one that does the saving, not you. Yeah. So if you feel upset about, you know, everything that you did in witnessing, that's a waste of time, it's in vain, and then you get mad about that or even totally depressed, you're really relying on your ability to lead those souls to salvation, not on God. God's the one in charge of those souls, not you, my yeah. friend. That's an important lesson. Okay, go to Acts chapter 10 now. Acts chapter 10. But then all those, what about those people who are sincere? You can't say that they went to hell, pastor. Well, God's not going to send them to hell. If they're truly sincere, let's say this. If they're truly sincere for the gospel, and then they listen to your witnessing, and maybe they didn't get saved that time, Let's even assume, worst case scenario, they didn't get saved because your soul winning was not accurate. Don't get upset and think that these sincere people went to hell. If they're truly sincere, God will make sure that they are given the gospel. A person who's sincere enough to listen to you with the gospel, God's going to check and see, I wonder how sincere that person is. And then the, God will give them the true gospel and see it. No, I don't believe it. Oh, look at Acts. Let me give you one point here. It's not just you getting upset about, then are you saying my sal salvation was nothing because I didn't get the gospel correctly or my soul winning was for nothing because I didn't get the salvation gospel correctly? Well, let me ask you this question. What about Catholics and Muslims who cry out, you're saying I didn't get salvation correctly after all the hard work I did? They work harder than you in your soul winning and you with your previous salvation experience if it was not genuine, if it's questionable. These people worked harder than you guys on that. You might say, why? Because they're relying on their works, their efforts for their salvation. What about them? If it's not biblical, 
Guess what? The answer still is whether it hurts their feelings or not. It's not right. But they're sincere. They want to get saved. God's not going to let it go in vain. He wants to test their sincerity. That's why. Because look at this one. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius. Look at this guy. He was sincere. He wanted to get saved. Uh, verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So what did God say? God said at verse 4, And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. In Acts chapter 10 over here, notice that uh, God said that in verse 4, he heard, he heard Cornelius' prayers, a sincere guy, and then God says at verse 5 and 6, I'm going to send you Simon Peter and you're going to get the gospel. See, so here's the thing. Don't get uh, upset about what about those sincere people sincere for salvation you can't say that they're going to hell well I don't know that's between them and God according to Romans 2 by conscience see so I can't say that but God knows in their sincerity you and I that includes you and I don't so God will make sure if the person is sincere for salvation God will make sure that they're given the gospel it's not you that gives the gospel it's God so don't get upset where, oh, so then uh, me giving them the gospel, you're saying they're not saved. Are, do you want to take credit or you want to give God the credit to get those people saved? A lot of times we get infatuated with numbers, don't we? That's something you have to think and pray about. All right, the next one, let's look at uh, John chapter 6. And then there are two passages, John 6 and the book of Luke. Chapter 23, Luke 23. That's why uh, I keep encouraging all of you, please, please, onliners and people in this church. We have a soul winning class. We have videos in our discipleship about soul winning, beginner's discipleship. I kept urging you guys to do that so many times. Take it, please. Because if you don't take it, then what if you give the wrong way of soul winning? You want to give the right way of soul winning. Amen. Maybe, uh, look, I really don't want to hurt people here, but I have to say this. Maybe it is a fleshly thing that you want to do things your way and that you're not teachable, that you don't receive correction. That's good. And God gives you an opportunity to be teachable and to be corrected and to learn soul winning, but you're too prideful to say, no, I know what I'm doing. And then if somebody points out from the Bible that you're not doing as well as you should have, then you get upset. Then what is that? That's selfishness. That's good, brother. Mm -hmm. Now, for people who are overtly discouraged about and who are passionate about, I did so much soul winning, I had no idea, then all those people went to hell, I feel so guilty. I want to encourage you, not beat you. I want to encourage you that, no, look, look what God did. God can use what you previously done for His glory, and it's not in vain. God's going to use it. And the person who was sincere for salvation listening to you, the Lord will make sure that they get saved. Maybe they did get saved under your soul winning. Maybe some of them didn't and will eventually get saved. I don't know, but God knows. Now look at this one. Let this be an encouragement to you. Look at the book of Luke chapter 23. And verse uh, 42, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. That's what he said, right? Notice over here, this is not about the death, not even the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ in here. The thief had no idea about that. This had nothing to, notice that repentance is not mentioned over here. Notice that over here, the, the sinner's prayer or Romans 10, 9 is not mentioned over here. It's just the sincerity of a person who's seeking salvation from Jesus. And what did Jesus do at verse 43? Oh, no, you're going to hell. No, verse 43, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Look at that. The thief didn't get the entire correct gospel, but the Lord allowed him to get saved. Look at John chapter 6. So you don't know how many of those people that you may have incorrectly given the gospel or didn't give the whole gospel, You'd be surprised how many of them the Lord would allow salvation. You know why? Because God's an understanding God, not a technical God and nitpicky God, like some Bible believers. 
Oh, you, uh, crying out to God don't save you. The sinner's prayer don't save you, says some of them. You're disgusting, man. Amen. Sometimes those people, the best they can know how, uh, the Lord can hear their cry and answer their prayer and get them saved. Oh, so then uh, you didn't repent hard enough and I didn't see you at church the next day. If you're sincere of salvation, we'll see you at church the next day. You better shut your mouth, John MacArthur, John Piper, Paul Washer, and even sadly Ray Comfort who joined that. That's sad because you know what Jesus said at John chapter 6? This is what Jesus Christ said. What a, what a great God. Verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will what? In no wise cast out. Amen. Look, uh, people who come to the best way, that's important to understand. To the best way of knowing salvation, God will accept that. That's important to understand over here. Okay? Now, go to the book of 2 Corinthians 13. Let's close it here. 2 Corinthians 13. Now, I am bashing on those nitpicky people saying, you're not saved, you're not really saved, and you didn't give salvation the right way. But uh, I'm not only bashing them, uh, I'm not only like, uh, I'm not only criticizing them and letting people get away with giving the gospel loosely. So this is not an excuse to do the gospel loosely, all right? A lot of people might love number four and just say, well, then I could do what I want, Pastor. What's wrong with what I do? No, that doesn't justify it, all right? Because look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. This is good. You have to do this. Verse 5, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. See that? Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 is commended to examine salvation. It is commended. So, what I'm doing for you guys is actually commended by God. This is important to do. You know why? Because if I don't do it for you, then Paul Washer is going to do it for you. And Paul Washer is going to examine your salvation to a point that will teach heresy and make you paranoid of your salvation. You know, I can't really blame Paul Washer. I kicked them really hard, MacArthur, Washer, Comfort, but I can't really blame them. You know why? A lot of people have been giving the gospel loosely, telling them to repeat a prayer after them, and then they just consider them saved. So then, rightfully so, these Calvinists, and Comfort's not a Calvinist yet, you know, who knows, but, <laughs> but he's not a Calvinist, but these people, he hangs around Calvinists. That's the reason why I say that. When you hang around people, it'll influence and change your doctrine. That's why I say that. Okay, but anyway, I, I, I hate explaining myself, but I have to do that so people don't misunderstand me. But back to the point at hand, I can't really blame Comfort Washer Piper for preaching their heresy the way they are. You know why? Because people are giving the gospel loosely. You don't want to be that church. We have soul winning class right after church on Sunday, and I hope that you join us. Now let's see. All right, if you would join. No, I'm just kidding, all right? I'm just kidding. Okay, we're not, I'm not putting you like, through, I'm not putting pressure on you and then making you leave our church, all right? We don't bash people over the head on coming to church and attending their meetings. Yeah. It's Amen. done by the spirit of liberty of the Holy Spirit leading you, Amen. not man-made flesh making us, having us, uh, forcing you to do it. Amen. But I do want to say this to you and to onliners. When there's a soul winning opportunity, don't be prideful enough to think that you don't need it, all right? Every man needs to receive it, okay? And if uh, your salvation experience is questionable and some people ask you, well, you know, just to make sure that you're saved or to have assurance of salvation or conf confirmation of salvation, is it okay that I can tell you the gospel again and then we can receive Christ for, you can receive Christ for salvation? Don't get upset about that either. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if a person, let me tell you something, if a person did that to me, would I be offended? No. no, you know why? I'd appreciate the person who cared for my soul. Amen, brother. That's good. I'll tell you what will annoy me, though, is an interrogator. Yeah. 
Those are the people who annoy me. Uh, you did a sinner's prayer, so you're not saved. And you didn't repent hard enough, you're not saved. And I have zero respect for interrogators. All right? But a person who genuinely cares, and you can tell they care when they ask you that. Don't be, don't be prideful against it or bitter. All right, I hope that this has helped you. I hope this encouraged the discouraged as well who were discouraged about their soul winning. All right, because like I said, it's not in vain. And the Lord's going to use what you did before to hone you even better. And God will give them the salvation if they're sincere. And if they did the best way they could, the Lord will accept that. But there's nothing wrong with examining salvation.